I was introduced to Japanese American group, and one of the girl goes, "She's not Japanese." Okay. And I was introduced to the black girls, and then the girls said, "You're not black enough." I'm like, "Okay, then I don't need to be in the either." And then. Welcome to the SGV Master Key, a show where you will hear personal stories of triumph over failures and how others successfully navigated the unique landscape that is the San Gabriel Valley. What makes us different? Well, just like you, we have chosen the San Gabriel Valley for our home or businesses or both. We believe it is the people and small businesses that make this community great, and we love to share their stories with you. We always encourage your questions and feedback, and you can find all of our contact information at sgvmasterkey.com. Here are the hosts for the show, Russell Mono and Scott Warman. All right, SGVers, welcome back to another episode of the SGV Master Key. It's great to have you with us. Hopefully, this is another insightful episode into one of us in the San Gabriel Valley for you. Uh, thank you for returning. If you're a regular subscriber and if you're new we hope you enjoy this episode are, are you familiar with the santa anita mall scott oh yeah yeah i've lived next to it or <clears throat> near it and been in it a million times although i haven't been in it for at least five years because i refuse to go to malls <laughs> <laughs> do, do you remember before the the major renovation um when it became i think westfield what what it was like then i i i, I knew it at that time, I don't think I can remember it specifically, but I, I did know it. So it, I, I think it had your typical food court, right? Like your pizza, panda. Dairy Queen. Yeah, right? Like that was your typical, it was Orange on the second Julius. floor. I hope it's still there. <laughs> but now the Santa Anita Mall is incredible, right? The food offerings, oh, maybe you haven't been there, but the renovations um, and the restaurants that they put in there are just incredible. You know, I, I have wondered, and I've wanted to go there because, you know, I do want to see the food court. That's the only reason I would go, <laughs> is to look at the food court. Uh, and I have wanted to see it. Honestly, I wanted to see if there was a Dairy Queen there <laughs> still, but Orange Julius, maybe they're gone because they've probably been replaced by finer, high-end, um, types of dining and I, I've been very curious it, it, so you're telling me it's really blossomed with oh uh, yes food? there there's like a um, an outdoor promenade I would I would describe it as uh, and the the restaurant offerings are are not fast food and they're not you know just your your they're not like your Applebee's or you know chain restaurants they're they're really high-end Asian restaurants Din Tai Fung is in there and and they made a beautiful restaurant in there uh, mm. upstairs. So yeah, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of new things in the Santa Anita Mall. I know it's always busy, always crowded, and it's kind of gone against the trend of so many malls. And so I, I've been very curious actually to see it. But I just have this thing I don't like to go shopping, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't like to go. You know, not find a parking spot and uh i'm, I'm very picky <laughs> <laughs> well that, that brings up uh our guest who actually has a business in the santa anita mall uh, her name is tomoko hino welcome to the show thank you welcome thank you yeah and uh, tomoko works with the japanese elderly in the san gabriel valley which is one of her passions and the other is hair her business in the, Sa in the santa anita mall is uh, aroma head spa so we want to get into that but um Tomoko, what is your connection to the San Gabriel Valley? I was born in Japan. I came to U.S. when I was 12, and Alhambra was my first stop. Oh. And Alhambra, my uncle was already here. So me and my mother, we came to Alhambra, and since then, I never really, well, I did leave, but I always came back to Alhambra, Monterey Park area. So I, I want to get into this part right away because for the listening audience, they won't know, but uh, what is your ethnic makeup? Um, my father um, is black, um, French, and Native American, and my mother is Japanese. So that's, a, a, in, in my experience, quite unique. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> a nice blend yes. of, of a lot of, you know, nice sort of ethnic mm. groups there. Yeah. So, so tell us, uh, how did that come about? What are those origins? Actually, be, before the show, I, asked, I said, <laughs> I assumed that her father was in the military because yes. that's actually my, my that's, grandfather. Yes. Yeah, that's what I would think. Yeah. Yeah. So Sasebo is um, known for Navy base. And Sasebo. Sasebo, Japan. It's Nagasaki, more Kyushu South mm -hmm. area. And that's how my father, he was stationed in Navy Sasebo. And my mother, they met. Yeah, I lived there for 12 years since I was born. So you, you grew up in Japan. You went to elementary school in, in Japan. Japan. Yes. And uh, so were you around the military the, at that time? Um, military base was a walking distance, really close. So I lived outside a Navy base. I lived, I went to kindergarten with local kids. I went to elementary school with the local kids. But whenever there was an event at the base, we used to go. Like a Fourth of July, Thanksgiving, Halloween was inside a base, so I was able to enjoy both culture. So I think I was lucky in that sense. Did you want to come to the U.S. at that time? When I was twelve, um, growing up in Japan back then, being mixed was not easy. Um, I was the only mixed person in town. Did a lot, a lot happened to me. I struggled. So part of me didn't want to be in Japan. At the same time, part of me didn't want to leave Japan because um, I love the culture. I love the four seasons. I love the food. I love the family, so I didn't want to leave. Are, are you willing to share some of those negative experiences? Sure. Um, yeah, I have in the past um, with my church too. but. It was not easy because I'm the only one that's not Asian looking girl, have a fro <laughs> in Japan. So I always got picked at. I remember, you know, I got pushed in the little water area going home. Um, they used to tell me, you don't belong here. Um, you're too dirty. You don't, you don't need to be around, stuff like that. And I remember at third grade in Japan, um, the kids, they have to clean their classroom. And there's a, um, like five kids do this part, five kids do shoe area or restroom. And one day I had to do a um, whole class with the five other kids. And then they told me, well, you could do by yourself. We don't want to do it. You clean the whole class by yourself because we don't want to do it with you. And I just had enough. <laughs> I said, forget this. I'm not going to deal with this third grade. I said, I'm going home. I took my backpack and I told the teacher, I'm not coming back again. I don't need to take this anymore. And then the teacher goes, okay, you could go home. And I went. Ho I was going home and I forgot something. So I went back to school to pick up my stuff. And I saw a teacher lining up the five other kids in front of all the other kids. And he slapped them. I saw them slapping each kids. That is not acceptable here now, but he, I saw him doing that and it was for me. You know, he was teaching the kids that, um, that's not the right way to teach the kids, but how would you feel if you were different and treated different like that? And I still remember that happening. A year later, he never came back to school because of that. And my mother kept in touch with him till he passed, even after I came So he was work. somebody who sort of stood out as yes. a, a person of some honor. Yes. That maybe he, he wasn't accepted by the other faculty. What he did is not right. Um, uh -huh. You know, you can't hit the kids. But what he meant to do for me was right. And then... Uh, that meant a lot to me. So I went back to school. <laughs> After that, I saw that. I go, okay, at least I have somebody who's on my side. Do you think he lost his position because of the hitting or because he was 
standing up for you? Well, you know, to be honest, I don't know. I never talked to him. I was still a kid, so I didn't really ask. I don't know. I mean, I could see yeah. that he might not fit into that kind of system. Maybe, maybe, yeah. But it was nice that he took that for stand me, for, for me. you. Yes, yes. yeah. Yes. I, I can see now, uh, Tomoko, like my, my first interest was to get into your ethnicity, mostly because I'm, I'm also mixed, right? And mm. so I see that and I wanted to share that mm. uh, with you. And I, I, going back to your story, my wife and I often talk about like how one positive influence in a child's life can make a big difference. And you don't know who that is. You don't know if that's you, but it can, it can really impact a child's life. And it sounds like, you know, this was really something for you, this teacher, right? No, you know, there's a lot of things happen in my life for being different. That's one of it, partial. But yeah, for being mixed, did affect, uh, affect, uh, made who I am today. It took a long time to accept myself and be okay and love myself. And yeah, it took me a long time. Maybe it took me now, <laughs> like hmm. 40 years. <laughs> years. Yeah. And, and kids can be very cruel. I mean, even, even if you're all from the same, you know, background they can yeah. be very cruel mm -hmm. did you find that it was mostly your peers that were treating you like this or was it the adults as well now i look back it's adults too and then even still today i'll be honest even still today i think everybody has that everybody wants to be fit in and accept this so you want to be the same or look the same or i think will never go away. Well, do you feel that here and now? Mm -hmm. You you feel that you don't fit in even even you're in the US? Till now, yes. I yeah. it's I'm still not full Japanese. I married to a Japanese American man <laughs> and he, I'm not Japanese American either. I'm not black enough either. That's why I was told by um when I was in high school, that um, you're not black enough. So I never fit in anywhere. Where did you go to high school? Alhambra High School. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was in the early 90s. Were right. there a lot of Japanese there? There was a lot of Japanese. And I struggled there too, that I remember uh, freshman year trying to, in high school, you kind of want to fit in, you know. And then I remember somebody, some guy introduced me to, they used to have a group called JAs. Did you know? <laughs> Did you hear about uh, that? So it's a group of Japanese kids and they hang out together. And there's black kids hanging out in one area and Hispanics or Chinese or they're always a group. And then I was introduced to Japanese American group and one of the girl goes, she's not Japanese, okay? And I was introduced to the black girls and then the girl said, you're not black enough. I'm like, okay, then I don't need to be in it either. And then my friend, my best friend um, in high school was a Filipino girl. Um, she accepted me for who I am. And it was not Japanese group or black groups, it was non not even related chinese friend i had Ch more chinese friend and filipino friends so wow that's that's really challenging uh, I, I i understand um maybe not the extent that you went through but I, I remember distinctly my friend takashi he had some friends over from japan and he invited me to dinner and we went to dinner and they were all speaking japanese i don't speak japanese and i remember that moment i thought hmm I'm not that. Mm -hmm. And and then because I, I remember that, I said, well, then if I'm not that, what am I? Right. Yeah. right? Like, I'm not Japanese. I feel like I was, you know, American. Mm -hmm. I grew up here. But nobody looks at me without getting to know me and says, oh, you're American. Mm -hmm. <laughs> True. So, um, yeah, well, so 
you know, we're getting an idea of what shaped you. Certainly, I, you must have, you know, developed a lot of strength from those experiences. What happened uh, after high school? Or, or Because I came to you as not fluent in English, um, I did struggle in school. Um, and I, I really don't like studying, you know, <laughs> schoolwork, I remember. So one of the teacher uh, realized that I'm struggling, but I remember I tried really hard. I used to go to the teacher, give me extra homework. I'll do it. I'll try, you know, to get better grades. And then one time she told me, do you, have you heard about makeup art job? I go, and then she goes, you do makeup for other people, maybe for the photo shoot, movies and stuff like that. Maybe you'll enjoy that. And I said, oh, that sounds really fun. But I never seen anybody doing makeup or stuff like that. So I didn't know how to bring it up to my mother. So for about a year, I just went to Santa Monica, less than a year, <laughs> Santa Monica College and not enjoying, just going. And then I said, you know what? Um, I really want to do makeup or something different from other people. Decided to go to a makeup school. Nice. You mentioned your your you made friends with a Filipina. Yes. Uh, still girl now in high she's my um, good friend. We still see each other. Sometimes we don't see each other for a few years, and then we see each other, and then we're like, yeah, we're still good friends. Um, yeah. Did you find your tribe, your group in in high school, or did it take longer to develop um, friendship? Actually. It was only few friend, few good friends that I had. I because um, I didn't fit in. I didn't like groups. I didn't like a bunch of girls hanging out, um, looking. Me, I don't know. Was I jealous that I didn't fit in, or I'm not sure. But I knew I wouldn't fit in, and I didn't want to fit in. So it was only few of a friend that I, you know, we like three or four good friends, and we were quietly. You know, spent the four years in high school. Group mentality is often like very tribal, right? Like, this is us. Yes. You're you're not. No, welcome. you're not. Yeah. Um. Yeah. As I understand yeah, that. Yeah. So, okay. And you went to Santa Monica College. Mm -hmm. uh, what happens next? I didn't finish it. <laughs> I didn't finish college. But I went to uh, makeup school. Um, there, you meet a lot of different people different people from different country, of course, from Japan, some European countries, and I made a few South, uh, no, Korean friends there. And I was more accepted there to be different. I guess they were different themselves too, maybe. I had fun, I really did. Is that uh, an art, do you it think? It is an art. Yeah. <laughs> like, it is an art. Yeah. It is an art. Um, it's not only art, but, um, you, when the makeup is applied to you, you feel how it's painted. Meaning, if they made you look beautiful, you feel beautiful. If they put a um, scary makeup, you feel like you're being mean or that character. You get into the character, oh, I think. So it's so much fun. You don't really do that now, do you? No. You, no. Uh, but did you do it then for for a little some time? while? I did a um, little bit of commercials, Japanese commercials, because I spoke Japanese. I had an offer to do a makeup in that field. Um, I did assistant makeup. I did go to Japan a few times to do assistant makeup work. There, I did have a hard time too. Going back. Yeah, going back and working as assistant. I remember. The models are mixed too. They're half Japanese and half Caucasian or half whatever. And then I remember she spoke English. You know, we spoke English to each other and the uh, head makeup artist didn't like that. <laughs> she didn't like for me to be friendly. I was supposed to stand back behind the head, you know, artist and then just help him, but he didn't like me getting close to that person. That's how I felt. You mean close to the model? Model and having fun conversation and it was out. You were out of place. I was out of place, but 
we clicked, but they didn't like that. Was it her personality or was it? I think that language, because she was mixed too. And everybody else in the staff were um, Japanese. So. Oh, no, I'm sorry. The, the, the person who didn't like you doing that, was that like their issue or was it like a cultural thing? Japanese tend to, um, how should I say it? I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> <laughs> um, they don't like foreigners. They don't like foreigners. They don't want somebody else to stand out in that kind of field. Maybe it's not Japanese. Maybe it's just the field. There are a lot of competition. So maybe if they're ahead, they don't want somebody else to stand out. Interesting. They so, don't like an individual presence, yes, right? Yes. It has to be more group. group yeah. Yeah. Wow. So then uh, you were in Japan, and how did you make your way back? I realized um, one of the person told me, you need to learn how to do hair too, not only makeup. Someone in Japan told you that? Yes. And I said, I noticed that too. <laughs> <laughs> and then for me to go back to school, I knew financially it would be better to come to U.S. And back then, if you tell um, people in Japan, oh, I study in U.S., you know, uh, oh, oh, you know. That's a plus. So I came back to go to cosmetology school to do hair. Wow. Oh. So what did you do with your cosmetology license? Did you go back to Japan? I, well, I was taking the cosmetology classes nighttime. Daytime, I was offered to work at the Japanese nursing home at the receptionist. So daytime, I worked full time receptionist and nighttime I went to cosmetology school. Okay, so that's that's the entry into the Japanese, the seniors, the seniors. okay. Yeah. And you you obviously liked love it. it. I love the seniors. I love. So you worked as a receptionist in a off. nursing home. Yes. And then uh, what did you develop into? On and off um, working for seniors, um, different position um, throughout. I worked at the receptionist, I work went into a business office and I met my husband through the senior community, got married, had my kids, and I wanted to do, be with my kids at home. So for about 10 years, I was a mom. <laughs> and then in the meantime, I was offered to come back to the senior facility to work as activity person. And there I worked as an activity um, director and for about five years and now I am working as a marketing sales marketing for the senior community are these Nisei seniors Issei, Nisei. Issei. yes did they accept you you know um, I feel more connected with these seniors than my age group I think in the beginning, they might have that, oh, she's not Japanese. But once I talk to them and get to know them, I think they accept me as Japanese. Just a little tan Japanese girl <laughs> 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 to them. <clears throat> yeah. Well, your hair is also very unique. I have curly hair you do? from my father's side. Oh. Yeah. A uh, very curly hair. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. And uh, my father said that his grandfather, his father and grand, so maybe you heard this, mm. they opened a school uh, in Korea. Mm. So they were not very well liked by Koreans, but mm. he, he used to get in trouble because they, they thought he was doing that to his hair. Oh, purposely. Yeah. Mm. And it's it's yeah. mm. more kinky rather mm -hmm. than wavy. Mm. Um, I don't know if there's Ainu in there, but mm. uh, it's that kind of like curl. Yeah. <laughs> I straight my hair. Oh no! Yeah, <laughs> do you really? I do. Oh okay. Not because um, I don't like my curls. It's easier for daily uh -huh. life. Yeah. It's straight. It's easier to manage. Right now, it's in a bun. It's I'm always in the bun. Oh okay. Uh, I, yeah, it's. But it's my, quite long. I imagine it's it it's like it's pretty long down to your sh mid yeah, torso. It's pretty long. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Huh. Well, uh, uh, Tomoko, we ask each guest to bring with them an item of significance mm -hmm. and. Uh, what did you bring with you today? Well, I brought um, obi. 
Japanese obi. This means a lot to me.、Um, so,、uh, sorry for the people、mm. who don't know what what is an obi.、Oh. <laughs> obi is what you wrap around on your waist, the kimono to hold the kimono in place.、Oh. And in the back, you can see the agome decorations in the back. So, so this、uh, looks is it silk? I don't know what it is to、But、be honest. Um, um, embroidered. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, it's it's very beautiful. It's something、um, for like a celebration. So my mother wore this at my wedding, the Japanese traditional kimono. There's a lot of story to my wedding, and it means so much now that she's gone. That、um, on the wedding, because she was a Japanese、um, dancer, and then she wanted to. She wanted to do a Japanese dance performance at the wedding, and I didn't want her to do that. Oh, really? Why not? I don't know why. I somehow didn't want to do it. I didn't want her to. I don't know if it, it to me it was like a show off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why do you want to do oh, that? Oh, for your like, wedding? Yeah, I'm at my wedding, and I, I didn't want that. And we had an argument. She was very hurt that it's something I always wanted to do. For your wedding, and then you're not letting me do it, and then I was so upset. And my husband just said, "Just let her do it. Just let her do it." And I'm like,、oh, "Okay." <laughs> and I'm glad she did it. Now I look back that I'm glad she did it. And but yet I'm not. I'm not regretting that we had an argument. I'm not regretting that. You know, because I was able to understand why it meant so much to her. That that's all she could give. Meaning, that was that meant so much to her, and that was a way for her to celebrate. So, I really appreciate her doing that. And then it comes down to for my kids too. I need to carry that on. Uh, I feel like I need to、um, provide my best of what you know I could give for them. So this is just a reminder that you know the culture-wise and yeah for her. Did she put a lot of meaning into it? So you had asked her not to do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but once she got permission. Was she, she was, then、um, totally into it? Into it, she was happiest mother. And then a lot of people came up to me after. Oh, your mother's performance was so beautiful. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, what about you? I know. What about me? <laughs> In your wedding. <laughs> yeah, wow.、So. This is for the listener. It's I guess primarily gold.、Um, and there, it's how long is is an obi? Pretty long. Yeah. You go f- maybe two rounds wrapped up. <laughs> and you said your mother wore this. Yes. Is that is that where it came from then, or, or did you have it before? Um, I'm not sure. She had a lot of kimono. So she she gave this to you. Well, she's gone. Uh huh. So I kept it. I see. I, okay. I remember this. So I There's few that I kept, and this is one of them. And then recently, my daughter graduated from Japanese school, and I decided to wear a kimono, and I wore this. Wow,、oh, that was going to be my next question: is、uh, Do you own kimono, and do you wear kimono? I usually don't. <laughs> I have my mother's、um, kimono. I kept it, and I decided to wear it. I don't know when the next time I'm going to wear it. How did you feel when you wore it? I was thinking about my mother. Yeah, the kimono and Japanese culture and Japanese、uh, dance or everything meant so much for her, and she always wanted to pass it on to me and to my kids. So it's very important. It's part of me. So the Japanese culture is very much a part of you. Yes. And and you would like to it to continue to live in your children. Yes. yes. And how do they adopt to it? You said your husband is Japanese, Japanese American. From here, yes. Oh, okay. He doesn't speak any Japanese. Okay. <laughs> is he Nisei? Yonsei? Sansei. Sansei.、Yeah. Oh, oh, can you sorry? Can you explain to the listener what those mean? We've been using those terms. Sansei is third. Ichi ni san. Ichi ni san. Yeah. Third generation. Yeah. yeah. 
So I'm, I'm second. I think I'm second. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's also a point of people uh, judging me because most seconds speak some mm. Japanese. Mm. Most seconds go to Japanese school. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm Did you have the option to go or? No, it, it was never, it was never afforded me by either of my parents. I only knew because my, my friends were going, mm -hmm. probably you, you may know some of them. Mm -hmm. They lived on the same street as Seiko. Mm -hmm. But I was telling her before the show, my, 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 my mom specifically wanted me to be American. Mm -hmm. She put me in the American activities. And yeah. it was your mother who was of mixed, it, who is of mixed. That's blood. right. Yeah. yeah. So she's half Japanese, half German, Irish, Spanish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she came here when she was four. But she lived with her mom. She spoke Japanese. They didn't have a great relationship. So she, I, I think that's also why she wanted to mm -hmm. push away mm -hmm. from the Japanese culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'm interested in, in how you, you came to be where you are today with your business and a little bit more about um, what you enjoy about working with the Japanese elderly. Uh, but let's take a quick break and we'll come right back to that. Yeah. Let's take a moment to thank our sponsor, Ormuth Law. At Warmoth Law, they believe that just because you speak a foreign language, come from a different culture, or simply don't know how to navigate the legal system, that should not prevent you from compensation from injury or receiving benefits. They've been helping SGVers like you for over 38 years. Visit law888.com or call them today at 626-784-7017 and tell them you heard about them on this podcast. All right, we're back with uh, Tomoko. So before the break, we were talking about the generational uh, names and going to Japanese school, but you described your work with the Japanese elderly as a passion of yours. Yeah. And uh, you did activities with them. Uh, what What do you love about working with them? They, well, number one, seniors, I think because they lived long, <laughs> they have so much story to tell. And you get advice for yourself. Before I even say anything, they understand. They know, I feel like they know how I feel by looking at me. Even with the Alzheimer's or dementia uh, residents that they may not remember five minutes from now, but when you click with them for that moment that you feel like I understand them and I'm being understood. So yeah, I, I, I love the seniors. That's a, a, I think it is a human desire, right? Mm. To, to be understood, understood yes. and to be seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm interested. What, what activities do you do with them? Well, when I used to do activities, um, well, outdoor walking, playing games, karaoke is like, um, uh, one of the favorite things for them to do. They love to sing. And then the songs that they sing is, um, from childhood songs that uh, I know and they know and we get to sing together they do um before covid there was outings going to you know places and then it's so much fun do you speak japanese with them yes i do you met your husband through the senior uh, work so what is the culture like uh for you have kids how many yes. kids do you have two so what is that culture how do you how do you raise them in uh in america it's hard to raise a kid, number one. <laughs> um, I'm learning while I'm growing with them. Every day is a learning for me. Do you want them to hold on to your Japanese culture, I you do. and your husband? I really do. I want, I want them to know. Um, I always remind them in Japanese culture, this is what we do. Um, when there is a New Year's Eve, I make Japanese um, meal. Mm. Um, their boys' day, girls' day, I try to make sure they have their Japanese sweets or um, culture-wise, I do have the Japanese TV program on so they listen to it. Yeah, I try to keep the Japanese friends and have them over so they get to hear the community, how we talk and stuff. It's very important. But you didn't fit, you didn't f uh, f fit in mm -hmm. to that culture. Yes. But you embrace it. Yes, I love it. I think in any culture, uh, there's a good and bad. 
I did experience the bad side of it, but that's not all. There's a lot of good side to it and good people in Japan. There's a lot of good people. Sometimes they were、um, discriminating because they didn't know. They didn't know who I was and how, how I was raised. So once they get to know me, they're good people. So. And so you, you like this. Culture of Japan, and you want to pass it on. And it makes me think, and I don't know that I know the answer, but what is American culture? Because that is what you're, you're raising them in. I guess, how would you identify American culture?、Uh, how would you describe it? What, what is it to you? America is big, and the only America that I know is California. <laughs> I don't know any other state, to be honest. In California, in the San Gabriel area, everybody is from everywhere, from different g e n e r a t i o n And to me, that's America. Even historical wise, I think European came there, right? Isn't how it works? So、right. to me, it's like America is where everybody c o m e from different places to.、Um, I think everybody's looking for who they are. And that's. Is there、America. a more broad broadness to it?、Mm-hmm. As far as thinking, is you're not thinking as insular as maybe other. I, I don't、mm-hmm. know. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I just think growing up,、mm-hmm. or my own take on it is that, you know, I just thought it was like big thinking. Mm-hmm. Americans think big,、mm-hmm. you know, because it's a, it's a big, big country. country、yes. And because there were so many opportunities、mm-hmm. that were available,、mm-hmm. just because it was not a, an established, entrenched way of thinking,、yes. that, that the thinking was quite open.、Yes. Now, I don't know what it's like today.、Mm-hmm. That's what it was like for me growing、mm-hmm. up. I don't know what people think it is today,、Mm-mm. but I mean, you're, you're raising your children right now. I don't know. How old are your children?、Um, 15 and 12. And how do they fit in、mm-hmm. and how are they developing?、Mm-hmm. You know? do, you, do you describe them as American kids? I don't describe them as American or Japanese or mixed k i d、um, They're my kids. They're who they are. If they want to be certain people, if they're not hurting others, not hurting themselves and love themselves, they could be wh- whoever they want to be. Yeah. I, I'm curious.、Uh, I'm three quarters、mm-hmm. Japanese,、mm-hmm. but you can see that I'm, I'm mixed. Can you? I don't know. I don't look at <laughs> people. I don't look at people what they are anymore.、Oh. I don't know. Do you, I just, do you know what color I am? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm white. <laughs>、uh, I was just curious like, do people recognize in your children that they're also mixed, or is it, do they look mostly they Japanese? They look, I, my,、uh, my son,、uh, freshman in high school, and then one day he came back and he goes, One of the Filipino girls spoke to me in Tagalog. I go, Oh. <laughs> and he goes, Yeah, she thought I was Filipino. I go, How cool is that? Yeah. So, yeah. That's my grandfather.、Oh. Uh, Shigemitsu.、Yeah. But he's you know, full Japanese, Japanese, but you can see his hair, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's my father and、uh, his mom. That's the older one I was telling you about. My, my、yeah. You just mentioned last time that y- you actually had a grandfather with a Hispanic. That's right. That was the,、mm-hmm. the U.S. Army soldier who went to Japan and married my mom's mom. His name is、uh, Frank Martinez. And he's Hispanic? No. He,、uh, well, he's from Spain. Okay. So、mm. um, I don't know if Hispanic includes Spain, but he's not from、uh, Central. I think Hispanic or, does, Latino does not. But oh, so, so he was full blooded Spanish? He was half Spanish, half German Irish. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, his, his look is completely Spanish. You know, yeah. I mean, we used to have a picture, a painting of him, and people would always look at that and they're like, 
who's that guy? Mm. <laughs> why, why do you have this, you know, <laughs> person's picture in your house? Mm. But that was my, my, my mom's mom. Yeah. Tomoko, so you also own a, a business, right? Uh, and it's in the Santa Anita Mall. Uh, where is it located in there? Promenade, you mentioned. Okay. Uh, inside of Sola Salon, um, there's a lot of small hairstylists working individually. And I used to work for um, Head Spa too. And because I wanted to do senior work and then the Head Spa, it didn't work out for the um, owner, previous owner. You know, she wanted me to work more. So I left and I still wanted to do a Head Spa. So I said, oh, just do my own. You know, I enjoy doing and meeting different people in different age, different nationalities. So what I, is the name of your business Aroma again? Aroma Head Spa. Okay. Mm. And what exactly is a head spa? <laughs> because I don't think I've heard that. Yeah, yeah I've never heard of that before either. So yeah. it's pretty popular in Japan. It's huh. more um, uh, taking care of your scalp. It's like a facial, facial of your scalp. Huh. Um, you massage and then that will help the blood flow of your hair scalp. It makes you um, like a massage, so ease your head and stress, and um, yeah, it helps. You just focus on the scalp. Yes. How long is a session? I'm sorry. Mm. How long is a session? I have 30 minutes and 60 minutes, but 30 minutes is not enough for a lot of people. 60 minutes, they come in and they get to take a nap and leave feeling fresh. I can only imagine, because I get massages sometimes, and and I sometimes have a scalp mm -hmm. massage yeah. as part of the yes. full massage. Yes. But that is such a wonderful feeling. Yes. And I can imagine. So you would do 60 minutes 60 of minutes, that. Yes. Uh, uh, do you do shoulders or yes, neck? Yes, a little bit or? of shoulder when they're sitting up. But they're in the bed uh -huh. and the wash bowl. Mm -hmm. So I wash their hair and massage for 60 minutes. And then when yeah. they get up, I do a massage. And for people with no hair? Um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> because, but normally people would have hair, yeah, right? Yeah. Because they go there to have the hair the washed. Treatment, and, yes. Yeah. Yes. What What does your clientele look like? Um, are they one offs? Are they like uh, regular customers? What What's the demographic? Lately, I've been getting on younger generation, twenties, uh, thirties, mostly Asians, because they know about it. They heard about it. Mm. Um, so yeah. Nice. Well, uh, we'll, we'll get the address and more information on, uh, where it is actually located for, for those who want to actually, you're probably the only one in the San Gabriel Valley that I've ever no, heard of one in other locations too. Okay. Uh, no. yeah. But, uh, before we get into that, let's uh, find out a little bit about what you love about the San Gabriel Valley. So let's talk about your SGV3, mm -hmm. three favorites in the San Gabriel Valley, places, experiences, etc. Sure. <laughs> Number one is Duck's Restaurant, uh, Curry. Well, I'm re related to the owner. <laughs> oh. <laughs> is, is that Las Tunas yes. uh, west of Rosemead? Yes. On the north side. Have you been there? Yeah. No, I don't know it. I don't know it. It's really what kind of food unassuming is that? signage, I Cur think. Yeah. A duck's restaurant, but mainly curry. Uh -huh. But now they have um, katsudon, steak, and ramen, and other stuff too. Uh -huh. But originally it was my uncle's, um, he owned it, and my mother helped. I helped when it started off. Uh -huh. And now it's my cousin who is running the business. So how do you spell it? Ducks, like, like uh, D-U-C-K-S, ducks. Uh, and it, it's ducks is ducks. the main... No, uh, there's curry. no ducks. <laughs> there's no duck meat. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. How, how would you describe the food? Is uh, I would say it's Japanese comfort. Yes. Japanese uh, mother's food. Oh. Mommy food. Right? Yeah. Okay. Home food. It, it's so unassuming. Maybe you just drive by. I think it's like white background with green letters. Green, yes. and, and it just says ducks. Yeah. Did you say Las Tunas? Yes. yes. Near Rosemead? Yes. Yeah, closer. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I don't recognize it, but it sounds good. Yeah. It is good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm. How about a second? 
second, um, probably Mandarin Noodle House mm. on Garvey. Garvey, Garvey, and um, Atlantic one block. It's been there like a million years, yeah. right? Oh, and yeah, that was, I know. Yeah, that was my first Chinese food that I went when I first came here, and I remember they used to have a fried dumpling, really huge. Yeah. One was that big. Yeah. And Yeah, it's it's a it's a re it's a building. And it's got it's small, red. Yes. Yeah, it's a like small a red orangey orange building with yeah. yeah it's small. It stands on its own. Yes. Yeah, I know. I've yeah. been going there yeah. for I think thirty five years yes. plus. Yes. I've gone there. Is that across from like the old thrifties? Is oh yes, on the other side. On the other side. Other side. And now it's a Chinese um, market. I think it used to be thrifties. I think so. I think so too. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying like to Atlantic and Garvey yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah. It was a really strange parking lot. It yes. Is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like a maze. Yeah. 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 Okay. Man Mandarin noodle house. noodle house. Yeah. On Garvey in in Monterey Park. Yes. And you like the the dumplings there. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Uh, did you say what you liked at ducks? Ducks about well, everything. Everything. <laughs> 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 and a third place. Third or place. Or third thing. Um is um these tofu in monterey park uh it's really close to our neighbor um it's these tofu they, they recently moved on the other side of um it's on atlantic close to 60 freeway there's a, a little shopping center area there now they have canes there's I, a canes um place and then on the side there was a Lee's tofu yeah, but I, they I moved to the other side. Recognize it? Yeah, yeah. Near Carol's. So is it a um, Korean? Korean food. Yeah. Co Korean. Uh, mainly they have sundobu. Uh huh. Mm. And they've been around for pretty long, twenty some years. I don't know. I remember going there. I don't like to eat, go to the restaurant and eat by myself. But that was the one place I didn't mind going eating by myself. <laughs> So yeah, and oh, my yeah. Da daughter loves that place too. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good yeah. too. Wow, those are three great yeah food choices. Yeah. You're, you're you're a foodie then. I love to eat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and I think you're only the third uh, to have three all unique. Unique. Oh yeah. really? Yeah. yeah. Nobody's yeah. selected any of those before. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> Ducks. I I I think I've only been there once before, but. I, I think I got to go there again. Yeah. To me, it's the uh, Mandarin Noodle House that kind of blows my mind because <laughs> literally, when I f first moved here, that was there, mm -hmm. and that was a place that was a destination. Mm. I think everybody for us. have to try that. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. I didn't even know it was still there. To it's be still honest, there. Yeah. 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 Wow. Wow. Well, Tomoko, uh, thank you so much for thank coming on this you. show and sharing, uh, you know, your story and, and what you've uh, uh, gone through and what you're doing now. How can people get a hold of you or, or schedule something with you? I work on my day off from the senior place, so I work on Sunday and Monday. Take appointment. I love to take appointment by text because I'm working. It's Aroma Head Spa. You can find me on the website. And, and is there a number that they can reach you at? Yes, um, it's. I could say it here. <laughs> no, it's up to you. You don't have to. Oh, uh, yeah, you're sure. welcome to. 213-800-2328. And text is preferred. Texting. Awesome. Well, thank you so much thank again. You. And uh, I appreciate you sharing thank your story you. with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for spending this time with us and hope you got uh, something interesting from that story. Uh, and you can always reach us at SGV masterkey.com and you can email us info at sgvmasterkey.com and we'll see you again very soon in the next episode thanks for checking out another episode of the sgv master key you can find the full back catalog of the sgv master key at sgvmasterkey.com and wherever you get your podcasts this show was produced and edited by russell mono and victoria allers of kind monster productions Thanks again for listening or watching. We'll see you again real soon in the next episode. Nice mother. No, kind mother.